Following Saudi Arabia's various human rights abuses, including the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi and, of course, the war in Yemen, it appears that Canada is at least finally considering getting out of their $15 billion arms deal with the Saudis. So this deal was made in 2014 under Stephen Harper's conservative government, and it was for producing light armored vehicles that, according to the Globe and Mail, are equipped with machine guns, medium or high caliber weapons, or even big barrel guns that can fire 105 millimeter shells or anti-tank missiles. But now Trudeau is expressing an interest to get out of this deal. Quote, we are engaged with the export permits to try and see if there is a way of no longer exporting these vehicles to Saudi Arabia, Mr. Trudeau told CTV's question period Sunday. The Prime Minister's office did not offer any further comments, but noted that Mr. Trudeau also said Mr. Khashoggi's murder was unacceptable. Canada has been demanding answers from Riyadh, and the contract was first signed by the Harper government. Now, one of the big obstacles, at least according to the media, for Trudeau pulling out of this contract with the Saudis is that it would lose 3,000 jobs in London, Ontario, the jobs that are producing these light armored vehicles. But I don't care. We don't mass produce murder machines because it creates 3,000 jobs. Uh, this, this war in Yemen, this Saudi-led war in Yemen, has already potentially killed 85,000 children under five from starvation. So I don't give a fuck about these 3,000 jobs. They can go to some other contract. I don't care. We don't, do, we don't engage with a country that is engaging in human rights abuses, including the war in Yemen, including murdering a journalist, and including jailing people that are fighting for gender equality. This is not what Canada is. Now, the other half of this, or another part of this, is that Saudi Arabia is such an insignificant trade partner. So when we look at Canada's top trading partners by volume, we can see that Saudi Arabia is way down the bottom of the list here, at $5.7 billion between June 2017 and 2018. Now, the other thing here, the other argument being made is that, well, not only will it lose 3,000 jobs, but also... Trudeau says ending Saudi arms deal carries a $1 billion price tag. But how much is that $1 billion when compared to something else? Let's say what Trudeau does for oil companies. So it's been revealed that oil giants pay billions less in tax in Canada than abroad, which includes $3.3 billion in yearly subsidies to fossil fuel producers in the country. And Canada has at least shown a willingness in the past to push back against the Saudi government. So over the summer, their foreign policy account tweeted out this. Canada is gravely concerned about additional arrests of civil society and women's rights activists in Saudi Arabia, including Samar Badawi. We urge the Saudi authorities to immediately release them and all other peaceful human rights activists. Now, this tweet sent off a huge chain reaction in Saudi Arabia that I covered over the summer. I'll link to the video above. You can watch that. But ultimately, what this shows is that Canada has at least been willing to push back against the Saudis in the past. So there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to do that now, as long as they can get over their obsession with these, with these uh, 3,000 jobs and the billion dollars that it may cost to pull out of this contract. Now, the main reason, though, I think that Trudeau is finally coming out and willing to say on the record that he's trying to do this is because of what is happening right now in the U.S., where the Senate just voted to end the U.S. support of the Saudi-led war in Yemen. And it appears that next year with the new House that is uh, uh, ruled by, by Democrats, this could actually happen. The U.S. may actually pull their support of the Saudis in their war in Yemen. So if that happens and Canada is left behind, well, I mean, <laughs> the idea of the U.S. leading in terms of... Uh, uh, human rights and Canada being a follower here would really show a real failure in Trudeau's ability to lead Canada as a su supposedly uh, a country that is supposed to be active in human rights across the world. So we should not be following the U.S. here. We should be leading on this. But unfortunately, it, it appears it's taken what the U.S. has done for Trudeau to come out and finally speak out against this deal. But hopefully, ultimately, if this does happen and Trudeau does pull out of this deal, it is a good move for Canada.